if we are given the equation, the formula area equals length times width, and we're given if that area is 44 when the length is 16, we're asked to find W. So I'm going to substitute 44 equals 16 times W. So this was substitution. And now I'm going to divide by my coefficient, division property of equality. And that's going to leave me with 44 over 16 equals W. And now I need to simplify that. So they're both divisible by 4. So I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides and get 11 over 4 equals W. And simplify there. The perimeter formula for a rectangle is 2L plus 2W, so 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. It tells us when the perimeter is 11, it tells us that the perimeter is 11 when the width is 3 halves, and then it asks to find 11. So we're going to substitute and we're going to say, okay, 11 equals 2L plus 2 times 3 halves. And so all I did here was substitute my values. Then I'm going to multiply that fraction, and that's going to be 2 times 3 over 2. So all I did was multiply here. And now that's going to be 3. This 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1. So divide. And now I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And I'm going to get 8 equals 2L. So this was subtraction property of equality. Now I'm going to divide by my coefficient, division, property of equality, and that's going to leave me with 4 equals my length. The volume formula for a rectangular prism is volume equals length times width times height, and so they tell us that the volume is 52 when the length is 6 and a half and the height is 2, and then we're supposed to find W. So we're going to substitute those values in. So we get 52 equals 6.5 times W times H. So all I did here was substitute. Now I'm going to multiply. Uh, well, I'm going to rearrange this so that it is easier to see. So all I did here was the commutative property. of multiplication, which tells me that the order that I multiply in doesn't matter. Now I'm going to do 6.5 times 2, so that's going to be 13. This I just multiplied. Now I'm going to divide by my coefficient, division property of equality. And that's going to leave me with 4 equals W. The area of a tennis court is 2,808 feet squared. Find the length of the court if it is 36 feet wide. So this requires that I know the area formula for a rectangle, because a tennis court is a rectangle. And I happen to know that the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. It tells me that the area is 2808 and it tells me that the length oh sorry it tells me the width it tells me that the width is 36 so I'm going to substitute that in 2808 equals the length times 36 um, I'm just that's just substituting now I'm going to divide by 36 the 36 is, call, is after the L, but it's still 36L. Um, that order doesn't matter. So this is going to be the division property of equality. 
and that's going to leave me with 78 equals L. Vivian is making a rectangular wooden picture frame that will have a width that is 10 inches shorter than its length. If she will use 92 inches of wood, what are the dimensions of the frame? So I'm going to draw myself a nice little rectangle here. And it says a frame that will have a width 10 inches shorter than its length. So the width is given to me in terms of the length. So the length is going to be my starting value, L, and my width is going to be 10 inches shorter than that, so L minus 10. Um, I know that the perimeter formula for a rectangle is 2L plus 2W, and even if I didn't know that, I know the perimeter is uh, adding all the sides together, uh, which essentially is just what you're doing here, L plus L plus W plus W. So I'm going to substitute, and I know this area, not area, sorry, the perimeter, the frame that goes around is 92 inches, the frame that goes around. So I'm going to substitute that in here, 2 times L plus 2 times L minus 10. So now I'm going to do my distributive property. This was just substitution. So I get 92 equals 2L plus 2L minus 20. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. I'm going to combine my like terms. This was the distributive property. So I get 92 equals 4L minus 20. So here I combined like terms. Now I'm going to add 20 to both sides to isolate my variable. Addition property of equality. I get 112 equals 4L. Now I'm going to divide by my coefficient and that's going to be the division property of equality. And then that's going to give me 28 equals L. So my length is 28. And this is 28 minus 10, which is 18. So my length is 28 and my width is 18. Find the missing angle measures for a triangle whose angles are given. I know that the three angles in a triangle equals 180. So I know that angle, if I'm going to call this angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3 equals 180 degrees. I can substitute the values I'm given, 83 plus x plus x minus 27, and that still gives me 180 degrees. So all I did here was substitute. Now I'm going to combine like terms. I have two x's here. And then I have 83 and minus 27. And That's 56, so 2x plus 56 equals 180. And I'm going to subtract 56 from both sides. Oh, this was combined like terms. Subtract 56 from both sides. That's going to give me 2x equals 124. This is the subtraction property of equality. I'm going to divide by my coefficient. This is the division property of equality. That's going to leave me with x equals 62. 
so this is 62 degrees. This is 62 minus 27, which is 35 degrees. Find the measure of the indicated angles. And I have my diagram here that has formed what we call vertical angles. And vertical angles are equal. So there are two angles formed by intersecting lines. They're opposite each other. They are equal angles. Because they are equal, let's call this angle A and angle B. I know that angle A is equal to angle B because they're vertical angles. So I can substitute what I have for A, x plus 28, and what I have for B, 3x minus 2. And now I can add 2 to both sides. This is going to be my addition property of equality and get 8, sorry, x plus 30 equals 3x. And then I'm going to subtract x from both sides. This is going to be my subtraction property of equality. That's going to leave me with 30 equals 2x. I'm going to divide by my coefficient here. Division property of equality. That's going to leave me with 15 equals x. Well, angle A is x plus 28. So I'm going to do 15 plus 28. And then angle B is 3x minus 2. So I'm going to do 3 times 15 minus 2, which is going to give me 45 minus 2, which is 43. And 15 plus 28 is going to be 43, which makes sense because they're supposed to be equal. So both of them are 43 degrees. The supplement of an angle is 63 degrees more than twice the measure of its complement. Find the measure of the angle. So we have our angle. We'll call this angle A. So I know angle A plus angle B is the supplement, 180. And so that tells me that um, the supplement is going to be 180 minus A. And then it tells me that its complement, it's 63 more than twice the measure of its complement. So I know A plus angle C is going to give me 90, which means C is going to be 90 minus A. And it tells me that B, angle B, is 63 more than twice the complement. So I'm simply going to substitute these here and say this is 100 minus, 180 minus A equals 63 plus 2 times 90 minus A. So all I did here was substitute. Now I'm going to do my distributive property, minus A equals 63 plus 180 minus 2A. Now I'm going to subtract 180 from both sides. I'm not going to combine like terms because I see that I can subtract this 180 out. That's going to make it a little bit easier on me. So subtraction property of equality. That's going to leave me with negative a equals 63 minus 2a. Then I'm going to add 2a to both sides. And that's my addition property of equality. And that's going to leave me with a equals 63. So that is my angle is 63 degrees. We're told we're going to solve the formula force equals mass times acceleration. That's what that stands for, by the way, F equals MA, for the variable M. So that means we want to isolate M and get that A away from it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that inverse operation. And right now we have multiplication, so the inverse operation is going to be to divide by that A. Our division property of equality. And that's going to give me F over A equals M. And now I have solved that equation for F. We're going to solve the N equals C over V 
for C. Uh, I knew what the other physics formula meant. I don't know what this one means, though, so we're just going to have N equals C over V. So I'm going to do my inverse operation to get that C by itself. This is dividing by V, so if I multiply by V on both sides, that's going to give me Vn equals C, because those are going to cancel, and I have solved my equation for C. We're going to solve the formula volume equals one-third pi r squared h for the h variable. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of that fraction. We need to cancel out that fraction by multiplying by the denominator. So we are going to multiply both sides by 3, and we're going to get 3v equals pi r squared h. So this is all one term here. So really it's pi r squared h over 3. So when I multiply by 3, that fraction just goes away. Now I'm going to divide out by the things I don't need. I'm going to divide out that pi and that r squared, pi r squared, so here I did multi multiplication property of equality. Here I'm doing division property of equality. And I'm going to get 3v over pi r squared equals my h. And now I have solved that for h.